Hey guys, welcome back to Community StarCraft 2, and I just totally butchered that opening, but I don't care. Today's lesson is about ZVP, or Zerg vs. Protoss scouting. This is going to kind of be about figuring out what your Protoss opponents want to do and what they're doing currently, and how you need to uh, react against what you're seeing. Uh, this is probably the most important matchup for you to scout, because there's so many random timings and attacks that you can die to, that you would have been just fine against if you just scouted it out in time. So uh, this is probably the one scouting video over the others that you really need to watch to try and figure out what your opponents are doing. Uh, namely because Protoss can kind of build up an army out of nowhere and if you don't scout that or if you don't realize what's going on then you're gonna die. So I realize I just repeated what I said but I don't care. Uh, it's just kind of a I don't care type of day. So let's just go ahead and jump into the game here. The player we're gonna be watching is Nurcio. And he's fighting Showtime. Both these guys are Europeans, and Nurcio's been around forever. One of the better foreign Zergs, never had outstanding results, but he's always been consistent. Um, and he's a really smart player, especially in this matchup, and it's something I want to highlight here. I see him not really doing a lot of drone stacking. I think it's interesting how pros try and decipher that. But, so the first decision you need to make is, of course, send out your first Overlord to try and figure out what's going on. Um, drone scouting in this matchup isn't overly common, only because most people have kind of figured out how to deal with everything that they see in the early game, so most people just scout with an Overlord and then just play their normal game. Honestly, and I know I've said this before in other ZVP videos, but I would just go pool first because it's so much safer than hatch first. But either way, you should rally your second Overlord down here to your natural so you can spot things like cannon rushes. I'm not sure if that's what Nurcio is going to do, and it's less essential to do this if you go pool first. So no, Nurcio is actually just going to be really greedy. Um, never mind. Okay, I'm wrong. He does just go pool first, so that's good of him. Um, so he's going to go pool first and then just take a hatchery when he has the resources. Probably around 16 or 17 supply. So we'll have to just watch his resources. Looks like it's going to be 16. And this is fine. Uh, one thing I would do is after you drop your hatchery, um, let it build for just a little bit and then maybe send a drone around just to patrol around here just once and then walk back. Just in case you are getting cannon rush, you need to know about that. Uh, but the overlord is heading out in the opposite direction. The one reason I like to keep the Overlord nearby and just Drone Scout is because if you keep the Overlord here and uh, you, you'll be able to see everything around here, any sort of cannon rush is starting, any sort of weird stuff going on. One of the problems on this map in particular is there is one cannon rush where they can just wall this off with two pylons and then start a cannon and actually phase their probe out through this hole. It's really, really annoying and the sooner you know about it, the sooner you can react. I've seen a lot of people just straight up die to that attack because they they don't leave their overlords here. So I think either way, if you want to be super safe, just leave your overlord by your natural expansion and just drone scout if you really need to see what's going on. Otherwise, just play as you normally would um, and and just you know do what you're comfortable with. In this case, Nurcio is going to scout correctly first. Uh, so he does come in here. Seeing the pylon here means a lot. You may just say, oh, he didn't really see anything, but he actually did see the pylon here. This is going to mean gateway expand. Uh, nobody that's forge expanding is going to have a pylon right here by this stage of the game. That makes no sense. So this is going to be gateway expand, and the reaction that you need against gateway expand more often than not is a faster gas. So probably a gas before a third base. So uh, I hope that Nurcio does that, because it's so much safer to do that uh, than not do it. So. He does know it's Gateway Expand simply by seeing the pylons. This is just an example of you need to know all the little ins and outs of a Protoss and know uh, where their buildings are going to go, what they like to do, what makes sense. Because if they were doing a Forge Expand and they open up with their first pylon here, then LOL, their, their Nexus is down here and they have no way to power any cannons that would be down there. So Forge Expand makes no sense. But conversely, Nurcio is going to be a little bit greedy. Uh, once again, he's going to take a Hatchery rather than get that gas right away. And the Zerglings are coming up here, verifying what's going on. See, and we know we're right. I mean, this is the only thing that makes sense is opening up with the gateway right here. These Zerglings shouldn't do too much, but this is kind of a little bit of indirect scouting to make sure there's nothing too crazy going on. But honestly, he shouldn't have expected to find anything with these Zerglings anyway. Now, these Zerglings are basically going to sit out here for quite a while. They're just going to sit here and wait. Uh, this is part of the scouting in, in ZVP, is knowing when you can drone and when you can't. And part of the time when you can't drone is when these Zerglings start to get attacked, because that means that they're moving out on the map, and you need to start producing units to hold that off. Secondarily, uh, make sure you do have at least one Overlord sitting somewhere around their base. You can see he is diverting this one to probably head right back over here, so he can scout this area when time comes. 
Um, so speaking from the Protoss perspective, if I'm the Protoss, I'm getting the Nexus down. Next thing I'm going to want to do is start to wall this off, and then I make a choice. Either I'm going to have a opportunity for a gateway timing, which is what this is going to always afford them. So that's something you need to be mindful of. If you're playing against a gateway expand, a uh, fairly quick gateway or warp gate timing is going to be pretty common. So uh, honestly, I'd pull a couple of these Zerglings back, just send them on a patrol or, or an attack move all around the map to try and look for hidden pylons or probes or something. So that's one thing that you need to do that Nurchio's not really being very diligent about. And secondly, you need to see how many gateways are that he's powering up right away. Three is very common, but if you can see a fourth hidden somewhere in his base, then you'll know that he was going to commit to some sort of gateway attack, and that you need to be able to produce units and, most importantly, get Zergling Speed out to deal with that. Um, I know I'm just throwing a ton of information at you, but the more you think about stuff like this, the more it's going to make sense when you start to scout it in your own games. So Gateway Expand, you need to know that gateway timings are very common, and the earliest they can hit is about six minutes. Uh, if it's on a Forge Expand, any sort of attack probably won't begin until at least seven or eight minutes, meaning you have a lot more time to drone up without really knowing what's going on. The other things you need to make sure that you're scouting for are things like Stargates or uh, uh, Dark Shrines, just in case you need to put up uh, spores and stuff in your mineral lines. So that's something you look out for as well. And in this circumstance, we can see that there are three more gateways coming up here, but Nurchio doesn't really know that yet. Now he sees the Mothership Core moving out, he sees the gateways are coming up right now. Uh, these timings are so sensitive for pros that he probably knows what's going on just by seeing the progress on this gateway and how and what time it is. But I don't expect you guys to know anything like that. But I mean, if you really wanted to get super in depth, then you could start exploring stuff like that. This is about the time, especially on a gateway expand, where you want to send this Overlord in. Just sacrifice it, because if it dies, that means that he just has units sitting at home, and there's not much reason for him to be attacking you right now. Um, and again, there's no reason not to have these Zerglings walking all around the map to try and find hidden probes or pylons or anything, which, from his vision, we have no idea if it's there. So we'll just keep running with that paranoia to kind of demonstrate what it's like. So we have no idea what's going on, but the Overlord is now being sacrificed. And honestly, most of the time, the tech that's going to be put up is going to be either behind the mineral line here or back here because it's just powered on the same pylon. So those are the two places you really need to look out for it. And Nurchio's coming in here. Either way, he's going to be putting up the Roach Warren, and this is something that I like as well. This six-minute, roughly, Roach Warren timing is something that you want to get used to, uh, especially in this matchup. I mean, there's no real reason not to have it because it's such a, a staple uh, in defense against a lot of these gateway attacks. But one thing I really have to criticize him for is Zergling Speed should be almost done against the gateway timing. Uh, or rather against gateway expands. Against Forge expands it's not as important, but getting the fast Zergling Speed is so much more helpful against random gateway attacks than having slow links. So, uh, yeah. So the Overlord's continuing to scout in here, and he finally sees the pylon back there, and he finally sees the extra gateway. So by this time, he can easily count the gateways. There's one, two... 3-4 that his Zerglings just saw, he has to know there's some type of gateway opener coming, or rather gateway attack coming, because he has... There's no reason for Protoss to open with four gateways and just sit there. Uh, any Protoss that knows what they're doing would rather take a second gas and make tech, rather than make four gateways. Sometimes they'll even put the tech on their front wall, because they'd rather have the tech. So, this is when you need to discern what's the Protoss doing and how am I supposed to react. And by now, you can see the gateways are morphing. That means there's got to be a pylon somewhere out here on the map. And that's why Nurchio being lazy with those Zerglings was not helpful at all. So, Attack. let's actually just see what's going on here. And, yep, there's the Mothership Core. There's a pylon here. There's a pylon there that he had no idea about, which would easily have been found if he had walked those Zerglings around. Then he could have shut this down well before it even started. So, uh, we're going to watch Nurchio struggle to hold this off more so than he should have. You see, he knows what's going on now. He knows there's four gateways, so he just starts a spine crawler. He's just like, meh, okay. Uh, whatever it is, you're probably going to target my third base here because the second base gets surrounded by units too easily. So he just starts a spine there. He has enough queens. And the Roach Warren should be about done, so he can start producing roaches to hold this off if he needs to. You can see his unit production now. This is the most important part of reacting to what you scout. His unit production now is only units. It's no drones. And that's the whole idea, is that you, you basically will drone up as hard as you can until you can scout something that tells you not to drone. And this would definitely be something telling you not to drone. So that's when you need to start reacting and just be like, okay, I need units out right now to deal with this or else I might just die to it. And that would be really stupid considering I know everything that's going on. 
So the zealots start to press up here, and eight zealots or so is fairly common with this, along with the mothership core, so that's what we're going to see. But again, think of how, how fast this would get surrounded and shut down if he had zergling speed. Think about how easily it'd be shut down if he had four or five roaches along with this, because he would have scouted that earlier. Um, and if he saw these pylons coming down on the map with any zerglings he had running around, he would have known about this well in advance, and would have taken a lot less damage here. So literally, this is the matchup where it directly matters how fast you scout stuff, and how much, how much more easily you're able to hold stuff off when it's transfused, which he doesn't do. But either way, the fact that he got on top of this sooner rather than later, yeah, he's still going to take some damage, but at the same time, he got his stuff up early enough, and he got units out quickly enough to be able to deal with it. At least he should be able to. I'd be surprised if he loses this. Yeah. Once the roaches are out, this, the zealots really shouldn't do anything more. You just want to keep pressuring. Maybe try to target out down this mothership course so they can't recall if you can. Um, but either way, the fact that he has... This is plenty of units now. The fact that he was able to put that roach warren up uh, protected him against this. But if he had zergling speed, and if he scattered around with the zerglings, this would be shut down way before it would have even started. So that's just... You need to be diligent about this kind of stuff. You can't just mess around and and hope it's going to work out. You need to be on top of what the Provost is doing, and you need to be ready to produce stuff when the time comes. So this is, for all intents and purposes, shut down. Now, the next stage is, okay, that basically failed. You didn't do much more than just dictate what my larva was, which, I mean, he did do a pretty good job of that, but even still, there's got to be some kind of follow-up, and what is that tech? So this Overlord is still in the main, which we notice is still there because he can't just warp stuff back at home and kill it while still trying to be aggressive. That doesn't make any sense. So the Overlord needs to be more diligent about scouting out, and by this point, about 8.30 or so, is when you need to think about starting your lair. Uh, he almost has the resources for it, but once you start the lair, you can get your Overseer out and just start to drop changelings and stuff and figure out what's going on. But the next stage of tech is going to be really important to figure out what it is. So let's switch back onto just Nurcho's visions here so we can see what's going on. You can see him easily pushing this away still, which he shouldn't really have any problems with. Just be a little bit careful and not overextend too far, because chasing this out will have diminishing returns. Um, but either way, he does just want to shut this down, and he can just go back to his base now and start droning. So, now he knows he's really not under threat anymore, and this is very important to see. His overlord now continues to scout, and he sees the uh, high number of sentries and the immortal coming out now. And this has to mean some sort of aggressive immortal play, because if they were just going to produce sentries and not be aggressive with it, they would have just taken a third base, which you can easily see if you position an overlord over there. He also has one here that you can see. Uh, but the fact that there's immortals coming out before expand means that this is going to be a follow-up attack that's going to be really aggressive. So he needs to find a solution to this and fast. The solution can't be anything like Hydralisk, because this is going to take too long to finish before the attack actually gets there. So he's going to have to rely on getting as many drones out as possible, and then as soon as he starts to see this moving out, whether it's like a Zergling or something right here, or the Overlord may have a Changeling or something, once he sees that moving out, he needs to cut it, cut drone production, and start hardcore unit production from that point on. So uh, that's pretty much what we see in the rest of this game. And because he's able to get on top of the scouting information, uh, he does eventually, like around here or so, maybe 12 minutes, he does have to fight this, but he's been on top of it for so long that he just pushes it away and wins. So uh, that's, that'll pretty much do it for this one. Let's jump into another replay that will demonstrate a little bit different things, uh, but kind of along the same lines here. And uh, that should hopefully get us into the right place or at least get us enough good scouting information to, uh, to be able to play this matchup. So I guess that first replay really showed us that you really need to be mindful of gateway timings and stuff like that. Um, this is going to show something similar but has different reactions that I really like a lot more. This is just to show that even though you might scout the same thing, the, there are a lot of different things that are going to be uh, useful. And TLO is the person we're going to be looking at here and he's fighting Genius, and I should mention that Genius, this is the very back end of his career, and this was the time where everyone knew that he was just going to all-in pretty much every game, so people played a lot more cautiously against him, and I'll show you the very smart ways in which TLO does that. So TLO is going to be going for probably a hatchery first, um, and this may just be in direct response to knowing that Genius likes to go open Gateway Expand. But the, uh, the another thing you can tell is based upon the time that the probe gets here, you can tell what type of build they're going for. At least most of the time. Genius is trying to fake them out by scouting on pylon. Most of the time on Gateway Expand, they'll just scout on Gateway, and it will be a lot later. So uh, that's something you can explore into on your own as well. It's not overly essential if you're just learning how to scout. 
So he's going pool first, which I really like. So pool is coming up right now, and the overlords are going to be scouting out what's going on. Uh, he did fight the pro for just a little bit, didn't try for any hash blocks or anything, so that's nice. And now he knows that it is a gateway expand upon seeing the cybernetic score coming up, up right now. So TLO knows everything that's going on, and this is the time where, okay, now I know it's gateway expand, it's not forge expand. I need to prioritize something like a faster gas or some sort of tech that's going to hold off against his gateway timings. So let's see what TLO chooses. He's droning up, and there's the gas. So the gas is going to be a lot earlier this game than it was for Nurtio, and that's really smart because he's going to get really fast zergling speed. And we're going to show how useful that really fast zergling speed is in this circumstance. So the Overlord's here, he's figuring out everything that's going on. He can figure that there's probably an expansion here, considering he hasn't seen it yet, but he's seen a probe walk back and forth several times. Uh, nothing else really makes sense if you're seeing that. So, uh, Tilo also getting a third base here, which it's fine as long as you can get the zergling speed out. You can see the zergling speed should just start right now, and there we go. Uh, and then TLO goes ahead and pulls out a gas. So he says that, alright, well I know a gateway timing is very n normal, it's very expected, which in this case we are seeing basically the same thing we saw from last game, which, I mean, we'll see different stuff. Forge is a totally different game, but Forge will kind of skip most of these gateway timings. It'll just go straight into tech and you just need to react from there. But I'm going to show you something that TLO does that you can do against a Forge Expand too that I really like. So this build from TLO is very catch-all. This is one that you can basically run almost blindly in either Forge Expands or Gateway Expand games uh, and do just fine because he has the fast circling speed and because he has a reasonably fast third base. It does well against both. So. Um, if you want to copy this build, which I would really recommend, note that he does pull out a gas, and note that he does still have the overlords heading in here to figure out what's going on. He does see the gateways transforming. Um, he most importantly doesn't see a second gas here. This is something I forgot to mention in the last game, is that a lot of times you can base your assumptions on the gas mining. So if there's only one gas being mined from, then there's no reason that he would be dropping any sort of tech like Stargate or anything. That would usually mean some sort of gateway attack. If he did have a second gas, or maybe an extra gas here at his natural, then you have to start thinking, all right, he's going to have like triple the gas income that he would off just one gas. So what's that mean? Does that mean Stargate? Does that mean something else? It's definitely something you should be scouting for. So again, TLO not being terribly diligent about scouting around with his Zerglings on the map to figure out what's going on. So this is coming up and he really has no idea. Uh, let me just put it on TLO's vision, actually. You can see this is actually where TLO is looking just to see what's going on. And the fact that there's no units at home and warp gate is done means that there's no tech. This is just a straight up attack and I need to produce circling, which is exactly what he's doing. So we'll see how easily you can take care of this, assuming you're able to get on top of it with circling speed. So the warp in should be coming and we'll just go on everyone's vision now so we can see what's going on. Genius may actually wait for a second warp in, but if TLO has been doing nothing but producing zerglings this entire time, it's just going to be LOL once this attack actually happens. So TLO just being patient, being patient, waiting for enough zerglings to actually make, make a difference here. You can let your hatchery tank for just a little bit, but you do need to get on top of this right away. Zergling speed's done and there's just tons upon tons of zerglings right now. This attack has absolutely no chance of working and he just has to recall. So TLO all over that attack from the beginning, and that's exactly the kind of reads and reactions you need to make. So here's another interesting thing. The warp ins here from Genius are sentries, but the fact is that he hasn't seen any extra uh, tech yet, so he needs to be on top of his overlord scouting quite a bit. So there's an overlord here. There's basically an overlord everywhere that Genius has power, so he knows there's no robo behind it. This is just screaming expansion right now, and TLO has to know that, but he can also be safe from Genius's dropping extra gateways and re-attacking by getting a really fast lair, which he should do here, well, right now. So he just drops the lair, and this is something I really like. I really can't say enough good things about this build that TLO is running, mainly because after this lair is done, you can just blindly go into Hydralisks, and it'll be a good application for all purposes. So uh, we're going to wait for that Hydralisk den to come up right now. Overlord still being annoying, trying to figure out what's going on. There is a forge here in the main. There's a, a robo here at the natural, which I don't think TLO knows about quite yet. No, he actually does. He did see it. So he did see that building right now. But uh, more importantly, this is going to be a gateway expand because the robo was so, or rather a gateway expand, a third base rather than uh, any sort of big attack because the robo is so late. Most of the time, if you were fighting some sort of immortal all in, they would be moving out of their base at about 10 minutes, uh, sometimes a lot earlier than that if they plan this out better. 
And uh, this doesn't make any sense for him to be doing, a, be doing a mortal all-ins because it won't even leave his base until like 10.30 or 11 minutes, and that's just way too late. So uh, Tilo doing everything fantastically. Uh, Hydralis Den is on the way now, and this is kind of a catch-all. So let's say Genius decides to go for like a blink all-in or just a regular gateway attack or something. Hydra Ling with Ling Speed is going to be really strong at holding that off. But the fact that he has his Zerglings over here, he can see everything pushing out here. There's even a probe that's going to be taking an expansion here. And regardless of what he does, he can produce, he can produce a handful of Hydras, try and trade against this army. And then he, since he knows the follow-up tech, which you'll see here for sure with his next Overseer, which uh, is right here, the Robotics Bay. So he sees that now. Now you have to think, okay, this is the mid-game tech of choice from this player. Um, if I just continue to make Hydras against Colossus, then that's going to be bad and I'm going to die and that would be silly. But what I can do is I can show him Hydra, make him think that's what I'm going to do for quite a while, encourage him to produce Colossus, and switch techs on him. And that tech switch can be into Mutalisks, it can be into something like Ultralisks, it can be into something like Swarm Hosts, which actually aren't that great of a counter against Colossus since that's what we need to deal with Swarm Hosts anyway. But the answer is going to be Mutalisks. So, Tilo has every base covered and he's been all over Genius's play this entire time. This is a perfect example of if you're all over somebody's scouting information, you can be just completely on top of the game the entire time and really not struggle whatsoever. So. All TLO needs to do is make him waste force fields here, try to get as good a trades as possible. You can see Genius is not force holding at all because this is such a huge area. Now all of a sudden his sentries are going down and this is spiraling totally out of control and Genius is pretty much dead. So all this stemmed from TLO having the right reactions and having the right reads. You can see his unit count or his drone count isn't terribly high, but at any point he can just flood this with drones in just one production round. So TLO playing this absolutely perfectly. Fast circling speed. Hydralis, after a quick glare, everything you really couldn't have asked much more from, and I really like this build. So this build both scouts really well, and it deals with everything pretty well. So this is something I would really consider running in your own games, especially if you're new to scouting, and especially if you want to kind of learn how to make the Protoss react to you, and kind of shut down every avenue the Protoss is trying to go for. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, the next video will be scouting in ZVZ which is a very tricky matchup. So that video should be coming up here fairly soon, so look out for that. And in the meantime, I'll see you later.